Hey everyone, welcome back to another Amped 5 update. I'm extremely excited to be sharing this update with you. Uh, we're going to be introducing a new way of working within 5 by introducing something called chain folders. And this is going to change the way that you can organize your projects when you're working with 5. We're also going to be showing you our new assisted annotation tracking and also how we can generate protected PDF reports. Okay, so let's get started by taking a look at these chain folders then. So chain folders will be a way of structuring your projects by being able to contain your different chains, your different workflows within folders. So after you update five, you'll notice when you open up five now, we get this new folder button in the chain history. By selecting this, you'll be able to create your first folder and here we can begin to organize our project before we start bringing in all the media. So I'm simply going to rename this folder uh, and it's going to be DVR system one. And we can imagine that we've got a large project that we're working on with several different DVR systems. And we want to contain the footage from each DVR system within its own folder. So we've made folders as intuitive as possible. So you can see that we can drag and drop media straight into the folder. So the file that I'm just dragging and dropping right now is a proprietary uh, DVR container that contains several different video streams. So Five's going to put each of those video streams into a separate uh, container, and then they're all gonna get loaded into that folder that I just dropped it onto. This will allow you to easily manage those large projects that you come across where you've got several media files from all different locations. I'll give you a closer look now so you can see we've got this DVR system one folder and then all those different video streams that I mentioned have been loaded into new chains within that chain folder. So I'm going to work this as if I'm working on a real case now. So I'm just going to go through and rename these chains uh, for where the cameras were located in this uh, DVR system. So you can see we've got, you know, the front door, the living room, kitchen, etc. And now I'm just going to continue working through this project as if I'm working a real case, just to give you some ideas of how you can really utilize these folders. So we've got our DVR system one folder, which has got all the video streams from the DVR system. So now I'm going to make another folder and this folder is going to be the working files. So the files that I'm interested in, the videos, the cameras that have got information on that I want to get. And I'm just going to copy and paste straight from the main folder into this folder. So you can see we've added that functionality that you can copy and paste chains straight into these chain folders just to easily manage these. So you can see I've taken two different video streams out of the main folder. I'm going to close that folder and hide those chains now so they're not in the way. And I'm going to deal with the two chains I've got in my second folder. So here I'm just going to do a file info and a hash code as if I was working on a real project. Uh, so we've got that bit sorted. So when I work on different videos in my projects, I will always do multiple attempts on the same video to get see if I can get a better result by doing different attempts, different workflows. So now I'm going to take from the working folder, I'm going to copy and paste into my attempts folder. So this is where I'm going to take one video and I'm going to copy and paste that video several times within that folder so I can do different workflows on that file. So in this example that you can see now, I've taken that living room camera footage and I'm doing a simple workflow on that camera. And then I will make a couple more copies of that and I would try different workflows. When I copy and pasted here, I pasted into the white area underneath the folder and you can see that that put the chain outside of the folder. But I can simply just click and drag on that chain and pull it back into the folder if I need to. So you have that option that you can either put chains straight into folders 
or you can just load them underneath the folders if you don't want it into a folder. So I did that with the living room and now I will show you the same thing again but this time we're going to use the other camera that we had which was the camera from the landing. So with my DVR system one landing enhancements folder created, I can simply now just copy and paste that footage uh, several times into this folder, which I'm doing now. So I've got three different chains here that I can then begin doing different workflows on to get that best result. And I'll simply just rename each of these chains within this folder, enhancement one, enhancement two, and enhancement three. Finally then, the final folder I would make for this uh, project within this DVR system one would be my final results, so my DVR system one enhancement results. I hope this has given you a good insight and a good idea of how you can utilize folders in the future when you're working on your projects. Okay, so the second big thing I want to show you then is the software assisted tracking that we've introduced with annotations. You may have seen this in Amped Replay already, and if not, don't worry, I'm going to show you how to use it now. So our software assisted tracking is built in within our annotations filter. So the annotations filter is where we can spotlight people, add text, add arrows, add images, all different sorts of uh, annotations. And with the software assisted tracking, this will work on all the different annotations. So it works on all of them. For the example though, I'm going to show you spotlighting and using it for spotlighting. So we've got this video of this guy walking around and I'm simply going to put into my chain an annotation filter and then I'm going to select the spotlight annotation and create a spotlight around our individual. So with the spotlight rounding, I'm just going to customize the spotlight slightly. So change the border color, the contrast, the brightness. Uh, and then I'll show you how we can use this tracking. So to use the assisted tracking then, we need to go to this new tracking panel we've got in our annotations. This is present in all of the annotations. And what we'll do is we need to click on track. Once you click track, you're enabling the software assisted tracking and you can see that these two rectangles have appeared, a green one and a yellow one. The green one is the area that you want to track. So it's the search area for the subject. And then the yellow rectangle is basically where this object you're tracking could potentially move to by the next frame. With it set up, like I set it up, all you have to do then is hold down the track button and it's gonna begin tracking our individual. And you can see if I stop it and then start it again, it will continue to do that tracking. So I'm just holding it down and frame by frame, the spotlight is moving and the software is doing everything for us. I'm not having to manually move this spotlight in any way. So when you are doing this, the things you need to make sure you have set up correctly is first your subject within that green rectangle. You can make that green rectangle as small and tight around your subject as possible for the best results. If during the tracking your subject gets bigger like mine just did then, then I will adjust that green rectangle to make sure I'm fitting the whole subject in it. And again, if he's getting smaller, so moving away from the camera, you would want to reduce that green rectangle as you're progressing through the tracking. And the same with the yellow rectangle. If you start off with a stationary car, your rectangle may be quite small because it's not moving much during the frames. If it then begins to accelerate extremely fast, you're going to increase that size of the yellow rectangle. 
So I finished the tracking here. So now I'm just going to play the video so you can see how well it's managed to track him. And you can see it does a very smooth tracking on our subject. As I mentioned previously, this will work on all the annotations. So if while he was moving and I had the spotlight there, I wanted to add text saying suspect, this would also track in the same way. Finally, I'm going to show you how we can do protected PDF reports. So we are generating scientific forensic reports. And the last thing we want is for them to be editable uh, when we're taking them to court. We don't want them to be questioned. So we have this option that we can make them protected so that they'll become uneditable. So the first thing I'm going to do is put in my project properties. Uh, so my case number, the author, and the description of what I've done. And then for those that don't remember how to generate a report, so we need to go to our project and then generate report. And in here, you'll see that we have these different types that we can do, and there's now protected PDF option there. So with that selected, I can click OK, and that's going to generate my report for me. With the report generated, we can then go through it and see everything that we did in this workflow. So guys, I hope you enjoyed this update video. I hope you enjoy all the new features and I look forward to seeing you again soon. Take care.